morning, guys. We have an egg. At least one. Not sure how many I have. But this could be a shiny baby Pokemon. So... It was not. So let's go ahead and we're going to claim this research here. Yeah, we know, we know. The Phoebus. Uh, can I catch this left-handed? Can I do it? All right, so let's go ahead and claim our research box. We're really hoping for a Sinnoh Stone and Raikou, but it's whatever. 2,000 Stardust, five Pineapps. That is probably the lowest tier on the rewards. So let's hit it. And it's Moltres. I guess I kind of need another Moltres. Not a bad thing because I can use Overheat because the three that I have have Sky Attack. So not bad, not bad. All right, guys, I'm gonna catch this. school and take my calculus final exam and then we'll get back and edit. Wish me luck! Welcome back guys. So tonight <clears throat> we are actually going to be talking about all of the Pokemon in Gen 2 that have at least three moves worth of coverage. As you can see, I do extensive research. I make sure that I do the utmost quality work and bring it to you guys. Based on yesterday's video, I did this just a tad bit different. I did only look at Pokemon that at least have three moves in their pool, uh, three different types of moves in their pool, but I also put them through the same spreadsheet that I used Monday to showcase what teams that I would be using and kind of rated them on that front as well so that I could have like a almost like a, a small ranking system, which worked out actually okay. So we're going to look through each Pokemon and then we will go through and we'll look at the little spreadsheet here at the end. Hopefully this video doesn't run too long. If you guys haven't been keeping up, what I'm doing is taking the best Pokemon move pools and considering the Pokemon that have more of a move pool than others more useful. Because if you think about, let's say, let's say a Pokemon is pure water, but he has an ice attack. Ice is going to be super effective against grass, which is super effective against water. So <clears throat> therein, you, your Pokemon is actually going to be able to counter what counters it. So the whole goal and idea was to find all of the Pokemon that have more than just two typings whenever it comes to their movesets. On with today's video. First on the list, we actually have Feraligator. So I think for Alligator is an interesting Pokemon because it has yet to have its community day. Typhlosion and Meganium have already had community days, so it's very possible that we're actually going to get a Totodile community day in the near future, maybe in January. It could happen, but of course we don't know for sure. Now looking at the move pool that for Alligator actually has currently, You've got Waterfall, Bite, Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, and Crunch. So you actually have three different typings. You have Water, Dark, and Ice. And this actually falls in line with the example that I was giving earlier. Because Feraligator is pure water typing, your one of your biggest weaknesses is going to be Grass type Pokemon. Grass type Pokemon are weak to Ice type Pokemon. So the fact that he can counter his own counter 
is what I, I believe is going to make him very, very useful. Next on the list is actually going to be Ampharos. Marie had the community today this past year, and in December, of course, we've gotten uh, the replay of all the community days, which means that maybe, I mean, once this video gets a little dated, it, it might be hard for people to have a Ampharos with Dragon Pulse, but at the moment, it seems like a decent choice. It's got electric typing, fighting typing, and dragon type. Dragon type in itself is not the most useful when it comes to type coverages because the only thing that it's actually super effective against is itself. Uh, me personally, I would rather choose something like fairy type move only because fairy type actually counters other things just besides dragon. Dragon only has one super effectiveness to it, which is itself of dragons. Number three on the list is actually going to be Gligar. Gligar is one of my favorite Gen 2 Pokemon. I don't know why, I just, I've always loved his, <clears throat> I've always just loved his design. It just looks really cool. He maxes out at 1857, so he's definitely going to be a good candidate for the Great League. If you can get some, some good IV matches and levels and stuff like that, which hopefully I can have an answer on that, like what is the best possible combination soon. Our moves are actually gonna consist of flying, bug, ground, and dark. He actually has four, four different types that he can cover, which I think is great. I think, and you're gonna see in the spreadsheet a little bit, it actually gives quite the advantage to Gligar. And it's not only because he has just a move pool with four different typings. Next on the list is Heracross, my favorite Pokemon from Gen 2 by far. Um, maxing out at 3101. I, if you guys didn't know, I'm, I'm actually leaving to Mexico in seven days. Next Wednesday, I will be traveling to Mexico and I'm going to be there until January 4th. So I'm going to be there for quite a while. I plan to stock up on as many Heracross as I can. I do need to bring some back to trade off. And I'm going to be trying to find Corsola. I will be down close to the, the latitude or whatever. I can't remember the exact latitude number that it is where Corsola spawns. But I'll be really close. And hopefully I'll be able to find. That will actually be two regionals off my list. Which is perfect. So Heracross is actually going to have Bug, Fighting, and ground type moves so he does have three he does have three different move types to work with and he's 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 my favorite kingdra comes in next uh kingdra actually has water dragon and ice so it does have three of course the dragon typing is not the greatest like i've talked about before but it does make him a candidate of one of the most useful next you have don fan don fan is actually he was a surprise to me. I didn't expect to see him in this list, mainly because I completely forgot about play rough. Fighting, ground, fairy, and steel. And you do have normal, but of course normal doesn't do super effective damage to anything, so I, I don't really like regard it in this scenario. Fighting, ground, fairy, and steel make up four different move typings, and you'll see that uh, Don Fan does really, really good and it gives Gligar a run for the money, and we'll see that here in just a second. Next, we have Hitmon Top, actually gonna be able to learn fighting type moves, rock and steel type moves as well. So he does come in with three. I still do think that Hitmon Chan from yesterday's video is definitely uh, the better choice between these two, between Hitmon Top and Hitmon Chan. Definitely go Hitmon Chan all day long. Hitmon Top does make the list. Next, we have Tyranitar, which Tyranitar is an interesting case. And I was thinking that Tyranitar was probably going to be the best one out of all of these Pokemon. But we'll get to that. So we have Dark, Rock, Steel, and Fire. Four different typings. He is a powerhouse. Everybody knows how freaking amazing Tyranitar is. You can't talk enough about Tyranitar sometimes. And I think in PvP, he's going to be the one of the most used and most useful Pokemon, and that's why he's gonna be most used. I really do believe that. Here is our spreadsheet. Now, this is basically the exact same spreadsheet that I used on Monday, except I've kind of tweaked this sheet so that you can see individual Pokemon and their individual effectivenesses. I also gave them a total effectiveness number by just summing up all of the numbers here. 
Now, if you didn't watch Monday's video, basically effective two is the column where all of these three moves are gonna be effective towards. So somewhere in Feraligator's move set, he's actually gonna be two times effective to fire. Being that he has water type move, that's where that comes from. He's two times effective towards grass because he has ice. He's four times effective to ground type moves because water and ice. That means he gets additional coverages for his moves. So his effective two goes up. The weak two column is obviously what are his weaknesses. He's actually weak to electric and grass because of his pure grass typing. Those are the two weaknesses that water has. And lastly, his resists are all the typings that his typing actually resists. So water will resist fire, steel, ice, and water. So all of this basically equates to the effective two column being added to the resist because the resist is a positive interaction between you and your opponent. It actually nets you positively. And then weak two nets you negatively, so we subtract that column. So just for instance, 2 plus 2 minus 0 is 4, but 0 plus 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So that's where those numbers come from. And then basically we're going to total up all of those, which give us a total effectiveness of 22. This is just a disclaimer. This is totally and utterly my own calculation. I come up with this on the fly yesterday just to have something, or it was on Monday, just to have something to tangibly see and compare two teams and two Pokemon so that I could make up my own teams. So I did do uh, a couple of things because Gligar has four different typings. I made sure to include the possible scenarios that he could have. And that's kind of where I was talking, I was hinting at earlier is it kind of sets him up for a really good scenario don fan actually has two possibles um now these aren't like of course the pokemon can have two different ground type moves i'm not taking into account every single move possibility i'm taking into account typing possibilities and i may have missed some i'm just going to be honest i probably missed some but it ends up leaving us with gligar having three don fan having two and tyranitar having three different move sets possible so, looking through all of this, we actually find this Gligar right here, which is flying, ground, and dark type moves, actually has an effective number of 28. He definitely wins the round or the top three right there. He definitely wins that category. He definitely wins out of these three Pokemon. Out of these three, you can see this Gligar has an effective an effectiveness of 30. This one is bug, flying, and ground. So we're actually gonna mark him as the best out of these three. Next, we have these three, which ends up being Donphan, the middle one here. So fighting, ground, and steel. And then the last four, really, uh, it's, it's kind of a tie between the Hitmontop and the Tyranitar here. So basically out of everything that won, we have a 24, a 24, a 28, a 30, and a 28. So out of all of these Pokemon, in my calculations, in my eyes, Gligar with a bug, flying, and ground type moveset is going to be the most useful Pokemon from Gen 2. I'm not trying to say he's going to output the most damage. I'm not trying to say he's going to have the highest TDO. I'm not trying to say any of that. All I'm trying to say is he's going to have the most type coverage. He's going to be the most useful to keep in your pocket. That's all. And with that being said, guys, I will catch you tomorrow where we're going to do Gen 3. Hopefully you liked today's video. If you like to hit the like button, make sure you do that. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can leave them down in the comments section if you want to, if that's your thing. But until tomorrow, guys, I will catch you then. What? You don't like it when I talk to the camera? Huh? You don't like it? Come here. You can be on the camera. Yes. Yes. Even though you're 
backwards. <laughs>